What's up? This is Tony from Municipal Waste, and you're listening to Toilet of Hell. You're listening to 66.6 FM, Radio TOVH, The Flush. You are listening to The Toilet of Hell Radio Show. Today we've got a very special guest, Tony Foresta of Iron Reagan and Municipal Waste. Tony, how are you doing today? Great, how are you doing? Good, man. Uh, you're currently driving through the middle of nowhere. Can you give us an idea of where geographically the middle of nowhere is? Uh, right now, I think we're about 45 minutes away from Mount Rushmore. That is... And we're, we're actually we're stopping, we're stopping the mount, at Mount Rushmore. <laughs> <laughs> I think right now we're in South Dakota. I'm not sure. We're, I, I just woke up. I have no idea where I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> You could be in someone's basement. Somebody said, like somebody said we're near Mount Rushmore, and we're going to go get a picture taken in front of it. Hell yeah. I think, I think South Dakota is about as close to the middle of nowhere as geographically gets, so, so you nailed it. I've never, in all the years that I've toured, I've never driven through this part of the country. So it's <laughs> kind of cool. Uh, that's, that's rad. What's your uh, next destination? Uh, we're gonna, we go to Seattle to uh, start the Warp Tour. Uh, we're actually going to go, we have to get there a day early for like a practice day. I've never been on a tour that's done this before. But yeah, we go out and I guess we're practicing, like setting up our equipment and learning how the tour works as far, I mean, I think there's like a hundred bands on the tour or something. <laughs> so uh, I guess they're just, I guess they have a day where you show up uh, actually a day early to the show and you kind of set up all your stuff and there's a kind of a protocol that goes to how how the thing is organized and, and to kind of explain it to all, all the people in the band did how, you, how it works. Did you ever in your entire life think that you would end up uh, playing the Warp Tour? I, you know, uh, I would say when I was a kid, it was I, was I was pretty blown away. I remember the first Warp Tour when it came through uh, Florida, and it was like, L7 and Seaweed, I think, and uh, Face to Face, or I can't remember. I remember Quicksand was playing as well. Uh, but yeah, I remember those early Warped Tours. Or the lineup, the lineups were super amazing, which I'm glad. I'm glad like this year they kind of got some, some more older. Yeah, uh, we. Uh... We, we were going through the lineup a couple of days ago. It's like, wow, this is a legitimately great tour now. Like, there's enough stuff for, for older dudes here. Like, yeah, I, I want to go get in the pit with the kids now. Right. So, yeah, I would say that in the past years, I wouldn't expect myself to be on Warp Tour. <laughs> <laughs> after, after, I wasn't really vibing with, with the lineups, but when they, when they told us uh, what it was going to be like this year, and uh, they said they were kind of bringing it back to the older style and you know mixing it with what they've been doing and i thought that was pretty cool so yeah we we uh decided to be a part of it <laughs> when you're not the uh, when you're not playing are you going to be just watching guar and sick of it all and candiri all day or do you think you're gonna migrate towards hang out with bands like bowling for soup and hawthorne heights i don't i don't know um i never heard of those two last two bands <laughs> you're not missing um, anything i'm i'm definitely gonna I'm definitely going to, like, check out some of the other bands, but I'm sure it's got, like, uh, weird bass drops in every time and people <laughs> rapping over over guitar stuff. I'm going to be a little weird and probably oh, yeah, not they, like it. But, you know, they, I'm going to take it all in. You know, I'm excited to... And also, like, I'm probably going to be watching more, like, you know, TSOL and Sick of It All and stuff like that, but, like... But I'm definitely. I mean, it's it's a two month long tour, so I'm definitely gonna be wandering around and checking out stuff that I normally wouldn't see. I'm definitely gonna watch Hatebreed every day. Though. Hell yes. So you you're a road dog. Uh, I mean, between your two bands, you're you're constantly touring. Um, what? How do you stay alive on the road? How do you stay sane? Uh, I don't you know. I'm just, I, I try to sleep a lot. Um, that's cool. I just had a. Um, a few months home, like without touring, Iron Reagan just did a did a tour with Power Trip and had a little bit of time. Had a, I wanted to take a few months off before this tour, and uh, yeah, so I ended up just I don't know, I was like you got to recharge your batteries every once in a while, you know. So I'm just coming off of that, and 
and I'm now I'm excited to get back on the road again. You know, you don't want to, you start feeling burnt out. Sometimes you got to hit the brakes a little bit, which, which is also why, you know, it took me to waste five years to write a new album, you know? <laughs> so, <clears throat> you know, sometimes you got to pump the brakes. It maybe it gets a little uh, crazy. <laughs> I, I think I read an interview you did with maybe it was uh, Invisible Oranges. You were talking about the the break in between the records and uh, kind of recording new things. There, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here. Was there kind of a discarded uh, Municipal Waste record between uh, Fatal Feasts and uh, Slime and Punishment? I don't. I don't think it was an entire record. There's a lot of songs written with lyrics that are actually like recorded like very poorly. Um, like, you know, in our practice space and just, you know, but, but yeah, we actually had a, a lot of songs, but we just didn't like them that much. You know, we were really too into it. I don't know if it was an entire album's worth of material, but we like to call it like the record we scrapped, you know, but like there's a, you know, we used, we used the best elements from those songs that we had and kind of just reworked them all. Not all of the songs, but, um, a little bit, you know, enough to get what we wanted out of it. And, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, like, you just got to start over. We we added a new member, so that kind of, like, it was also part of the transition of, uh, well, since we're getting Nick, we don't have, we should have to teach him these songs that we are not even super confident in. So it was better to just kind of, like, fuck it, we'll just take what we like and then move on and just, it, 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 was, it was even it's probably quicker to just write better songs than to teach Nick the songs that we weren't really super confident in. You know what I mean? So, so, uh, we just decided to just fuck it and just start over. And I think it made the record way better. Um, I like, I like it a lot. So yeah, I, I, got, how it came out. I got a chance to listen to, uh, the, the promo copy as well. It's, it's a really, really sick record. Um, any chance that you might release some of those scratch tracks for the diehard fans in the future? Well, the thing is with those is that they're, um, they're not, it's like, I don't even think, um, maybe not, probably not. Who knows? We have so much shit. Like, I think every <laughs> record, even, even like, even like Art of Partying had like songs that never came out. We would have to go through and find all that shit. Who knows where that is, but um, yeah, it's it's tough, man. <laughs> so yeah, but uh, I don't I don't know if that would ever see the light of day. Anybody of that shit? Maybe one day we'll leak those shitty demos just for fun. But you know, <laughs> you could try to release them under confident. a different band name and see if uh, another label will pick up on it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think it's just, uh, it's so poor. It's almost like a garage band recordings, you know? I think there might, there's probably a market for that. If you put it under a different name with a super shitty sound quality, you know, there's a number of underground uh, blogs that are going to pick it up like, oh, it's way better than those posers in Municipal Waste. Yeah, that, that's actually kind of funny. I'm going to steal your idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, let us premiere the tracks first, and then you can steal the idea. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, how did you how did you get hooked up with Nick uh, with your new guitar player? Oh, we've been um, I think I think we've been hanging out with Nick for shit, man, well over ten years. He was in, he was in Cannabis Corpse with Phil, and uh, he plays in this band called Bat with Ryan, and um, he was also in Vulture. So, I mean, we just known him, just hanging out, playing the music with him. I mean, I think. When we talked about getting another guitar player, I think he was the only rational decision for us to, to have someone because we like to we like to have people that we want to hang out with as well as as play music with. You know what I mean? So it's like having him in the band was a no brainer. You know, because he's just well, a good friend of ours <laughs> first and foremost. And that's like that's the best thing to have in a band. And he's also a ripper in guitar, so <laughs> it's kind of inspiring to, it makes you want to go to band practice and you know, having a new, new person around kind of puts a little bit of new energy in the band. You kind of work and live around the same guys every day, um, you know, especially doing um, 
the project with landfill with uh, Iron, Iron Reagan. Uh, I mean, do you ever just get sick of each other? Nah, nah, I mean, not really. We, it's like family at this point, especially like me and Phil. We're really around each other every day almost. <laughs> we like, we'll hang out. We're not on tour. Just go watch, we watch pro wrestling every once in a while. And, uh, yeah, no, not really get sick of each other. You kind of know when, when you need to give someone their space. Sometimes people got, like, personal shit going on, and sometimes you just got to know when to lay back, you know. You can, you can tell what button's not to push when someone's having a bad day and stuff like that when you're just around somebody that much. Um, I think everyone gets a little sick of everybody. Oh, you know, not just being in bands in general, it's just, like, being around people, but... Nothing's ever, there's never like blow ups or weird, weird fights. We just kind of like, we yell about some shit and then like just start talking about something else. <laughs> <laughs> nobody, nobody really gets, nobody really gets like worked up over shit. Yeah. You know? We're having too much of a good time to really let it, let stuff like that, you know, bother you. <laughs> So at this stage in the game, I mean, you you put out two full links this year uh, with your two projects. Where where which one's your baby? Iron Reagan or Municipal Waste? Which one's my what? Which one's your baby? Oh, I mean, this one. I mean, they're both my baby. So I don't know. <laughs> so you have two kids. Yeah, I, I always hear that. Yeah, you <laughs> have to pick a favorite do, child. Do you say that to a parent? <laughs> you say that to a parent. Like, which one's your baby? <laughs> Yeah, I've always oh, heard that uh, they secretly have favorites. <laughs> Ask your parents that. I'm sure they <laughs> yeah, they told me I'm not it. <laughs> no, I, yeah, 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 I said yeah, you're fine. No, I, I mean it just depends on how I'm feeling and you know what where I want to direct certain creative energy. So I don't know. They're both, you know, it's they're both just creative outlets that I love very much. So I don't know. It's 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 neither one, you know. I mean, this thing is this thing's more like my teenage child at this. Point. <laughs> this band's almost fifteen years old. This band's gonna get a driver's license next year. It's crazy. So you uh, you tend to uh, your songwriting. It seems like you 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 prefer writing, uh, I guess, short stories uh, with uh, municipal waste tracks. Um, I heard a little bit about uh, the the backstory of amateur sketch. Uh, I've heard it's uh, about posers. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about that? <laughs> I guess, yeah, I guess it's basically like posers. I also always wanted to have a song called Amateur Sketch because of uh, the, the Leprechaun in Mobile, Alabama. So it's, a, it's about both of those things. Well, I'll see the Leprechaun say yeah! yeah! It's pretty much what that one's about. <laughs> so Municipal Waste also has a long history of referencing horror movies, specifically trauma movies. Uh, you know, the video for Headbanger Face Rip was done by Trauma Entertainment. Uh, what are some of your favorite trauma movies? Oh, um, I, I was just talking about this the other day. Um, I would say, strangely, I mean, of course, it's like Class of Newcomb High, but uh, I really like Cannibals in the musical. <laughs> like, that's like my secret favorite trauma movie. <laughs> I don't know. It's, uh, it was just such a weird movie when I saw it at the time. I was just like expecting this super gory trauma movie, and it would turn into be like a full-on musical. Which I was like, "Oh shit!" Well, I was not expecting that. <laughs> yeah, trauma is weird because you can get great stuff like Cannibal or Toxic Avenger or you know uh, Return to Horror High, and then you also get stuff like a movie called Butt Crack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a ton of like weird uh i can't think of any of the names of them now but like more like the newer releases like in the past five years and it's, it's they're still cranking them out you know yeah i, I went to what right, somebody, yeah. i went to a trauma event that um lloyd coffin was there like premiering some of the new movies uh like one of them was father's day it was the same guys that went on to make the void so it was just like an incredible start for those guys just hooking up with trauma wait i'm sorry the guys that did The Void? Yeah, yeah. Have you seen... Uh, it came out, I guess, about six months ago? Yeah, no, I, I just... Uh, I was just uh, raving about that movie uh, interview I did a couple days ago. It's so good. <laughs> it's pretty funny. 
Uh, but yeah, those, yeah, yeah. The director, those, I, those guys did a trauma movie. Yeah, it's called Father's Day, and it was about a um, a guy that kills fathers on fa- and kills and rapes fathers. Yeah, uh, it's it's surprising. Oh, that's it's awesome. Surprisingly good. I highly recommend checking that one out. Well, that's <laughs> that sounds amazing. Yeah, I, I thought The Void was great. It was creative. It reminded me of like like so, some old older campy horror movie and then it turns into like this weird event horizon type oh yeah like, insanity there's definitely like the uh the lovecraft like elder gods in there it's, it's so sick yeah yeah I, I was saying that, that that's like one of my favorite horror movies i've seen in the past few years for sure if someone made the municipal waste the horror movie what would you want it to be about that would be something like something that would take place at like municipal high and then it would like spill over into like you know a a bloodbath of some sort (laughs) not like a columbine type thing but like (laughs) a uh, like a uh, more like a giant uh, beer can eating people bloodbath yeah it's something something along those lines it'll be it'll be it'll be like I would say meatballs mixed with like something like me mix with like dead alive set at municipal or high. So Yeah, I'd buy that D V D something like that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there would be titties in it. There'd have to be titties in it. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it, might, it, might, it might be dude might be dude titties, it might be lady titties, it might be anybody titties. Equal opportunity titties. Be titties <laughs> that sounds I like a new album. Right? There will, Mark my word, there will be titties. <laughs> um, I've got to ask, because I, I'm getting to the point where if I have four drinks in a night, I feel it for the next two days. Do you have any tips for a hangover, beating a hangover? Yeah, I've gotten pretty good at it. Make sure you sleep. Don't drink too much caffeine real late. Drink a shitload of water right before you go to bed. That is, if you're not the type of person that pees your pants a lot. <laughs> um yeah, I always stay hydrated, and uh, and while you're out at night, drink water. If you're going bar hopping, have a water with your with your drink, especially if you're doing shots. Drink some goddamn water, you you fucking dehydrated bastard. <laughs> it As, sounds like you have your warp tour speech all ready to uh, preach about beer to the sixteen year olds that are going to be there. Shit, I got I, I bring Pedialyte. Like I have little packets of Pedialyte just in case. Like if I know I'm really drunk. I'll put Pedialyte in a damn water and drink that right before I go to bed. Man, that's it uh, works, man. That's, that's really like, that's some, that's something that's if you're like that's if you're like you know if you drink like like a lot. <laughs> uh, I got to see I know my shit, man. I've been doing this for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw that you got to interview uh, the the mayor of Richmond recently. Uh, you know, do you have any, uh, any plans? Yeah. Uh, how, how, how was that by the way? Was that a cool experience? It was great. It was great. Cause not a lot of people know, know that guy's story, but he's, uh, he's only 35 years old. He's really young. Uh, he's very progressive and he's, he's, uh, he's smart. He's funny. He actually like is, is a part of the community. Like he actually hangs out at local restaurants i'll see him at bars he's but he's also very uh professional and he he's he isn't like a rock star mayor or anything so that's why i think he's kind of off the grid for, for a lot of people they don't really realize him but he's done a lot of good things for the city um he's honest and he's, he's a real good real good real good guy and uh it's really nice to i kind of thought it'd be a good idea I was asked to do it, and I thought it would be a good idea to participate because I think more young people in Richmond need to be aware that there's – it isn't a bunch of old white people that are trying to make a change in Richmond. It's like there are people that you can vote for that are actually worth a shit. Yeah, it, it, it was, I, was, I was honored. I thought it was, it was a cool idea. And I think he's been so busy. He was working more with, like, older people, and he kind of wanted to work with me because he thinks that – they thought that, you know, it'd be nice to have him appeal to the younger crowd and have him, like, speak out to, to be more people, more younger people to pay attention to it, you know, if we work together. And I think that's smart. I think more people need to do that. That's rad, yeah. 
I mean, um, any chance that you could write um, maybe an anthem for uh, the next Bernie Sanders type to come around? Nah, they wouldn't, nah, they wouldn't want that. I can't sing too good. <laughs> they, want, they want someone to sing for that. You got to get some, a vocalist. <laughs> you call it massive progression. Well, I'm a vocalist. See, I guess you need a singer. I'm, I'm a vocalist. You need a singer for that job. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in keeping with uh, the politics thing, I don't think there's a metal show I go to now where I don't see the municipal waste, the only walls we build are Walls of Death t-shirt. Uh, how did that come about? Well, it was originally like a one-off shoot thing that we were going to do um, when we were playing a show in L.A. We weren't really playing a lot of municipal waste shows, but we had we had a gig out there, and uh we were, it was right when he was talking, right, the only thing he was talking about was like the wall. He had to build the wall when he was the president. He was going to be the, build the wall, get, you know, like talk to shit on Mexico and all this shit. And, you know, playing in LA, there's a lot of punks from, that, from down there, you know, and it's like, it's offensive, you know. We wanted, we're like, we just want to let everyone know that we weren't, we weren't about all that bullshit, that hatred. So we made those shirts, and it was only like we only made like fifty for the show, and they sold out before the doors were even open. <laughs> <laughs> People were like just coming in. They're like, "Can I just get in and buy a shirt real quick?" Yeah, so it was crazy. And then, but we didn't really we weren't really playing shows, so we didn't really do anything with it. And then it got online to sell, and, and then the, it, then then a rumor came out that you know Trump was suing us, which was a false rumor, but it made the shirt popularity explode so yeah it was crazy <laughs> and then you know next thing i know kathy griffin's talking about it and a year later and that dickhead's president and he's fucking pissing off everyone in europe and you know yeah it's, that's how it's going it's a weird world of living. <laughs> i don't know what what's gonna happen next me and me and ellen did are gonna start beefing or something. I don't know. <laughs> the sky's the limit. <laughs> yeah, the sky's the limit. Anything else you want to tell us about Slime and Punishment? Comes out June 23rd on Nuclear Blast. Uh, what can fans expect? Uh, June 23rd. Yeah, we're we're uh, we're we're pumped about it. We're fucking trying to work our way to play as many shows as possible this summer and uh yeah the record rules we're we're really proud of it we worked our butts off on it five years god damn it hopefully y'all like it <laughs> can verify it's a good record go pick it up and uh if there's any left you can also pre-order a limited edition package with a lunchbox uh that has the album yeah yeah on. if you go <laughs> yeah if you go to the nuclear blast website uh that's our label yeah they have a bunch of different shit like <laughs> the lunchbox version. Who knows what other stuff they have? But the lunchbox came out crazy, and they also have like different color vinyl and cool shit like that. So yeah, check it out. Pre-order that shit. Hell yeah.
You are listening to the Toilet of Hell podcast, and love is dead because Ivan Moody might be leaving Five Finger Death Punch. How are you guys doing? Oh, well, now I'm heartbroken because of you. Yeah, man. You can't, can't just believe drop a bomb like that on us. Well, you start on the down note and then you work your way back up. Good lord, we're gonna need. We've got an uphill battle. This is the Empire Strikes Back of episodes. <sighs> there is like a finger of death punch for every time Ivan Moody has left that band. <laughs> um, yeah, we. I woke up this morning and uh, Lasser Tillian was like, uh, do we have anything to run in the 11 o'clock spot today? I was like, oh, oh, I forgot. So I, I wrote a post uh, today in roughly 15 minutes about possible replacements for Ivan Moody in the band. Oh, yeah, you're going to talk about your, your good buddy, Phil? <laughs> Uh, well, the thing is, nobody can quite match uh, Ivan Moody except for Phil Labonte because they both look like uh, baby men. <laughs> <laughs> Just like over-muscled yeah, baby men trying like, to compensate. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like a toddler. Like, their hair hasn't grown in and they're just, like, weirdly juiced on monster energy. Yeah, yeah. that's the thing with short guys. If they can't grow up, they have to grow out. It's just the only option that they have. Yeah, and then then you got to buy guns like to to additionally tack onto that. Yeah, you can shoot the gun as high up as you want. Yep. I I just like that he's become like the go to rebound vocalist for bands that lose theirs. It happened once with Killswitch Engage. That's right. And, yeah. And now with Five Finger Death Punch, and he's like good enough to like, hey, help us out. We're in trouble, but nah, we don't want you to join. Well, I'm just saying that my pick, uh, one of the one of the suggestions I made, uh, is the only thing better than than Philibani is uh, Toby Keith. I think Toby yes. Keith could be way more jingoistic than even Ivan Moody. It would take them to a new stratosphere of sales. You know, like if you join the military, they give you their discography. I think Phil and Selmo should do it. Man, I. You're not the first person to suggest that to me, and I will say this like uh, without a shred of irony. I don't think he has the voice for it, which is saying something. Uh, his, his his voice is shot, man. He doesn't have the voice for a lot of things. It's true. Uh, when I actually met him at uh, Rock and Shock, um, he's just the actual voice that he talks with is so ridiculously bullfroggy. He's just like, oh, you ever big man of the you do it, oh, 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 oh. and um, you can't understand a word he says unless he really tries, I think. Did he call you brother? Oh, yeah, probably no less than seven or eight times. So he might be a professional wrestler. Might be, yeah. With, the, with his voice shot like that, it takes a lot of effort to get the racial slurs out. Yeah, I don't know if you guys have heard Scour. It's not the best. <laughs> Um, but it's about all he can do at this point. I listened to the thing he did with uh, Bill, uh, Bill, whatever the fuck his name is from Mosley. Mosley from House of a Thousand Corpses. Uh, the song about donuts or not having enough. Uh, it was it was one of the worst songs I've heard in the last several years. Yeah, it was uh, really bad. Yeah, I'm not familiar. Well, should I check it out? Is it worth my time? We no. might just play it on okay. this show to uh. make the listeners <laughs> fucking deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just play it as the closer. I, I found that with this show, uh, you know, I work really hard on a lot of episodes, and like we try our best to get good guests, and like you know, we try our best to be funny and relevant, and nobody listens to those episodes, uh, and the, the ones where I just can't hide my dripping disdain for the audience those do pretty well so i'm just gonna go fully in that direction <laughs> it's a it's a valuable lesson to learn you gotta hate the people that love you the most in order to get ahead in this business it's just how this works i mean you see how metal sucks operates they only write to upset people that is factually true yes um Actually, we do have a great guest on this program, so that might mean that we've already shot ourselves in the foot. Going to have Tony Foresta of Iron Reagan and Municipal Waste. And, you know, uh, anybody that's ever seen my writing or heard me talk, they, they know that I'm a huge, huge, huge fanboy of those two bands. So, um, you know, make it to the midpoint and then see if, uh, see if I can keep it in my pants. Spoiler, don't. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I figure that, you know, to, to flip the script and actually talk about something, uh, we should talk a little bit about uh, the state of metal and how basically every person uh, contributing to it is actually ruining it. 
yeah, it doesn't look too good, boys. It's uh, it's pretty rough. Um, the edges are frayed, and there's a, a crack in the the neck, and the frets are all buzzed out, flattened. It's just it's it's awful. This old gray mare, she ain't what she used to be. That's right. Um, at least so says um, people that ostensibly have been involved in this for a while. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with this uh, this blog called Clairvoyant. Is that is that familiar to you? I I haven't heard of Clairvoyant, but I've heard of. <laughs> I, I apologize. I was I was uh, filling in the uh, the vowels for them. Uh, Clairvoyant. <laughs> Uh, is is a blog that started up, um, I'm going to say roughly a year ago. Um, it it kind of popped up. It did a premiere of uh, several albums that I tried to premiere unsuccessfully. Uh, so out of nowhere, this thing immediately had some juice behind it. And, you know, I did a little bit of reading into it. Uh, it was uh, founded by, um, let's see, the, the, the managing editor is uh, Fred Pissarro, who's previously worked with uh, noisy and like invisible oranges and pitchfork, uh, and you know, looking at this thing because it looked really good, it still looks pretty good. Uh, yeah. You could tell that there was serious money behind this thing. So, in the years since they've launched, like you know, it, it can be tough out there. There's a really crowded media market for metal news, they've kind of struggled, um, and I would say that kind of struggled uh, is kind of an understatement considering that Toilet of Hell is an actual competitor with them in terms of traffic uh, and we don't spend any money. So um, I, they, I think they finally found a niche though in running aggrieved op-eds about how metal is not good. Well, they had to do something. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's it's. I guess it's working for them because uh, in my Twitter feed, my Facebook feed, I'm seeing clairvoyant everywhere because people are sharing these posts i mean they're also saying like this is fucking stupid <laughs> but they're sharing them which is all that matters um it started out three weeks ago with uh a piece by david hall uh you know the the title of this is uh the director of maryland death fest the movie <clears throat> metal is the fucking worst uh that director would be David Hall. He used to have a label called Handshake Incorporated, um, which had bands like uh, Pieron and uh, Gridlink and a number of other really cool ones. Uh, they shut down, I think, similarly about two years ago as well. But um, he wrote this piece, um, and I wanted to like this because it started off so strong. Oh, yeah. It's... Um... The, I, I don't want to read too, too much because we, we kind of had a great time reading articles last time. But uh, he he spends the first half of this article making me fall in love with every stupid thing he has to say. It's just beautiful. Just to give you an idea, the very first paragraph is, uh, is there any other genre of music that is so self-absorbed, so desperate for validation, so pathetically obsessed with itself, so childish and image conscious, so accepting of conformity and mediocrity as metal? No, there isn't, because metal is the fucking worst, at least in North America, and it needs to get right or go away forever. And that's, um, that's great, because, I mean, yeah, that's, that's the kind of thing that we talk about constantly. It's, it, you know, yeah. there, there are so many tryhards... And pose, I hate to say that posers following, <laughs> yeah. just trying to follow the same template as bands that came before them, and it's just there's a gray goo of metal and bands oh, yeah. that, that aren't like willing to try something new. Yeah, absolutely. And he, I mean, a lot of the article is kind of in this vein where he just takes apart uh, heavy metal as an attitude, as a concept, and all of its listeners and all of these shitlords that we've been hearing from over and over again. Um, but then he goes on for the remainder of the article to prove that he's exactly the kind of gatekeeping, self-absorbed, overthinking shitlord that he spends the first half of the article calling out. Um, pretty much, I think it's maybe at the two-thirds point, he just makes this really ridiculous statement that heavy metal died. And the moment it died is when... Uh, Sunbather was released by Deaf Heaven in 2013. Like, that is the moment 
where heavy metal was put in the fucking grave. <laughs> it's it, it, it's pulling off the uh, the mask and Scooby Doo to reveal you were the poser the all along. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like you were the good guy at the beginning of the episode, but since you weren't in the gang, you had to be the the ghoul, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Old man, no fun club. <laughs> uh, it's so it's so funny. Like even in this day, was it four years after Sunbather was released? Uh, still yeah. flogging that dead horse like this oh, is bad. God. You shouldn't like this. I mean, and he he goes on to cite the Ray Ban commercial, um, and there are a ton of rebuttals to this article for some obvious reasons because it's absolute nonsense. But uh, everybody seems to kind of agree with him on this point. They're like, well, yeah, we get it. The Ray Ban commercial was just uh, that, that's over the line. We can't have that. Uh, and it wasn't a, a Ray Ban commercial so much. It was kind of like. Um, just a documentary uh, that kind of just talked about Death Heaven for a bit, and uh, it was sponsored by Ray Ban. Yeah, they also uh, they also did like this weird profile thing that I wrote about because it was super cringeworthy. Yeah, but I mean, like, also uh, Death Heaven like got to be the the needle in a haystack that got to make money making fucking metal. Like, how lucky can you be? So right. begrudging their success for like taking some fucking trendy sunglass maker for for a little bit of money, like I, I got no no grudge with them for that. And I mean, I I, I don't know how far Deaf Heaven have come financially since I last saw uh, this interview they did with I believe it was Noisy, where the guy goes into their apartment to kind of see how Deaf Heaven lives. And these dudes are not millionaires. Like, Harry McCoy was living on a mattress, like, behind a sheet. Like, that's where that poor guy got to go and fuck his girlfriend with the rest of these dudes just hanging out, smoking weed or whatever they were doing. I mean, yeah, they were getting by on their music, which is a huge accomplishment in this day and age. But they were, like, just getting by. Um, and, and there were metal bands making millions and millions of dollars in the 80s and 90s. Um, some of which being probably the ones that David Hall thinks are fucking oh, true. Um, so I, I just, it, it makes no sense that people get on bands' cases for... Not, not to get too far away yeah. from the initial point, but how much money do you think Celtic Frost made? Because <laughs> it, it's got to be way more than like any other band of this era. Just, oh yeah, I mean, yes, absolutely. Um, I, Especially, what was it, Cold Water? All right, <laughs> cold, cold, cold Lake, Lake, yeah. Cold Lake, yeah, sorry, my bad. Um, that probably uh, got them a, a, a couple K here and there. Yeah, man, the best Celtic Frost record. Um, must listen. So, that's a thing, man. Like, I, I don't know if we want to dwell on this piece too much or, or move do. on with the next... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I just, I don't understand the point of these articles that seem to be cropping up more and more as you know more of these websites also crop up like why do people feel the need to talk about this general amorphous state of metal yeah what does it accomplish it's pretty much just navel gazing at this point isn't it i mean and we're guilty of it too from time to time of course but like it's it's all navel gazing you're you're speculating like this this thing that i love that i'm becoming less and less attached to is actually being ruined by these young kids. Yeah, it's uh, it's it, it kind of boggles the mind what these guys think metal really is. Like what they 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 just have this assumption of of how metal kind of operates and thrives, and what defines the integrity of the genre. Um, I, I and when you look at some of the rebuttal pieces that people made, uh. The rebuttals, they kind of point out the obvious stuff. Like, they say, well, Def Heaven didn't kill anything. Like, they just made an album. They're just a band. They didn't have some sort of, like, uh, Machiavellian reasoning behind <laughs> doing it. You know, they didn't go out of their way to try to, uh, you know, eliminate what we love with their efforts. They're just a band from California who just wanted to make a cool record together, and that's all that happened with no real commercial success in mind, I'm sure. Um, if you if you guys do want to start the band that like actually tries to ruin metal for everybody, let me know because I'm totally into that. 
Uh, I would love to have you guys involved in that project. It's been something I've been mulling over for a while. I've, I've listened to a lot of pop music, grunge music, country music. I'm, I think I'm really onto something here. Yeah, if you add, uh, if you if you somehow make country rap and metal come together, you'll just create the the er metal. It's the last thing. <laughs> All right, I got I got I got one brewing. Here we go. Let's see. Ba with the ba the bang a bang. Good lord. Diggy, diggy. <laughs> metal has um, been done since the nineties. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, but I digress. Where where did we go? <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I, I guess we'll get back to the um, these articles here. I mean. Um, Neil Jameson threw his hat in the ring because literally anytime anybody anywhere in a metal publication says anything or farts in the wrong direction, Neil Jameson has to say the F word 48 times and put it in an article. Have any um, of you, have you guys, either of you guys ever heard a single Krieg song in your life? Nope. I have. I, I have, actually I have. <laughs> Is it any good? Um, they're not, they're not bad. I mean, as, as a guy who listens to black metal and performs black metal, um, it's not too too typical. I guess it's a little doomier, a little uh, a little more on the low end, but uh, it's okay music. I don't really have anything bad to say about his band. Um, but this guy's been at this forever. He's been doing this since like he was a kid back in the '90s. And um, if you like look up how long Krieg has been around, you'd be surprised at how they're still so unpopular. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I you know he used to be in Noct Noctomistium, right? Uh, I don't know if he was in Noctmistium. I know that him and Blake Judd were in a band called Twilight together. That was a bit of a super group with members from Creed and Noctmistium. That might have been the only two. I'm not too well versed on the subject. Okay, to well, I'll shut the hell up because apparently I know nothing. No, that's okay. Uh, I, <laughs> I mean, him and Blake Judd go way back, and Neil Jameson wrote this huge article about what a piece of shit that Blake Judd is and what a drug addict he is and how he deserved all the worst things in life. And then Metal Sucks quoted him directly, and then he wrote a rebuttal piece to how Metal Sucks, you know, oh, you paraphrased what I said. I never said that. Um, but, uh, yeah, Neil Jameson goes into it, and he kind of says something about how Antifa is ruining Metal because that's his thing now. He wants to be like Mr. Centrist, um, where he can say, hey, stop touching boobs at shows, but also Antifa is a bunch of fucking pussies and cucks or whatever. Um, we all I love centrists. That's love, right. Dude, love that's, that piss warm middle ground. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, that's right. Um, and I actually, among all that, this is, we're, we're kind of behind the eight ball here. This has been going on since the beginning of June, at least. People have been kind of commenting on uh, this David Hall piece and everybody's kind of thrown their hat in the ring. Um, I have some very strong opinions about where metal is because it's not really anywhere, <laughs> depending on who you are. Um, what a lot of people don't seem to realize or be okay with is that you can be like a 16-year-old girl who just like sits on a laptop and throws like a, a metal song on Spotify and then that can be your experience with metal. It can begin and end there, and it's totally fucking fine. The next song you can listen to can be, like, from the new Lord album. It just doesn't matter. <laughs> like, you don't have to absorb all the rest of this bullshit where it's like, oh, we have Nazi sleeper agents over here just trying to, you know, use really great vocabulary to, you know, be um, pseudo-intellectuals about how metal is being ruined by posers and uh, we don't have to go into what band's doing what in the commercialization. It's just really at the end of the day, these aren't like representations of what's happening to the metal genre. It's just representations of what's happening to the metal genre for David Hall. Like, <laughs> it's like this is just David Hall's experience with metal. He's just mad on the internet. Like we were talking about last week. He mad, man. I mean, we maybe he was hungry and it was kind of like a hangry rant. That's right. He probably just didn't have his biscuits. We, or we his are no blood sugar. We are, let's be yeah. real. We are all guilty of being mad online from time to time. The difference is yeah. that I don't write a two thousand word piece about being mad and then ship it to another outlet. <laughs> yes, you do, don't you? Uh, it's my own. It's my own outlet. <laughs> that's yeah. I guess I suppose that's true. Um, that's what I'm doing now, and I, I love it. You know, I can just write a article every six months for you guys and then just sit back and the site still runs. It's the best thing that ever happened to me. Yeah. I deeply regret doing this every day. Anyway. Uh, so, 
moving on with this, um, th there were a number of pieces, there were backlashes uh, within Clairvoyant. Uh, one of the staff writers wrote, metal is not the worst, you just don't get it, which kind of touched on some of those subjects. But getting, getting back to um, Neil Jameson, he doesn't get it. And that he's been too involved with this for too long, where everything is live or die. And it's just not that way at all. So, yeah, I think his personal perspective, like I was saying before, seriously skews where he considers the genre is or how you should act and everything else. Um, I, I mean, I, I, at one time, like the only interaction I had with Neil Jameson was a couple years ago. Um, Vince Neilstein had wrote an article on Metal Sucks that was about how vinyl is kind of a lame duck. Like you just, you don't, he doesn't really see the point in vinyl records and CDs and anything like that. He thinks, you know, Spotify is the future, digital files are the future and all this shit just takes up space and it's just for novelty and so and so. And then, um, Neil Jameson wrote this article, uh, just as with as many F words as possible. Once again, just saying how, uh, you know, oh, good for you. You don't buy vinyl. That's great. Bands need you to buy vinyl. So there. Um, and then because this was, I don't know, maybe it was a little before I realized that rebuttals on top of rebuttals are stupid. I wrote a rebuttal to both their articles where I said, well, vinyl and Spotify are stupid. And here's why. <laughs> <laughs> And I got into how, you know, Spotify pays you a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a penny for thousands of streams. And then I got into how vinyl is just a really great way for record companies to make profit off of bands trying to put their stuff on a format that they think people like. Um, and uh, I said that I think Bandcamp is just the way to go. And I think Bandcamp is how we should always do things, just digital files that people can purchase. Um, and then Neil Jameson, I don't know, somebody sent it to him and he was like, uh, I refuse to acknowledge a person with a, uh, a moniker that asinine. And he was referring to, uh, my name, Brennicide. He just made fun of the fact that my name was Brennicide. Um, and this is a guy who a couple years ago called himself Lord Imperial. So I don't know. <laughs> well, how do you know he's not a Lord? Maybe he was knighted. <laughs> well, he went by Lord Imperial. Then he went by N Imperial. Then he went by N. And then he went by uh, just Neil Jameson. And I think I called him like Lord Imperial Diddy Dog or something. And <laughs> I only and answered to Lord Nefarious. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. and yeah. That, that's, um, I mean, God, that's so silly. It's two sides of the same idiotic coin. Like, that's right. I, I like your, your, your nickname because I get it. It's fairly ironic. You know, yeah. it, going back to the MySpace days of like, uh, what wh what were people calling themselves back then? Like a lot of a lot of X's. Yeah, <laughs> X Tyler X kill you. I, That's I, right. I remember there was like, <laughs> oh yeah, my ex girlfriend. She hated this chick that called herself Thrashley. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I still think that was a cool name. Um, I, I one time went on a plenty of fish date with a girl who called herself Smashley. <laughs> That's badass. I should have saw that coming, man. That was a rough date. Oh. Oh. Tell us about it. Uh, no, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to tell you about it. So uh, we went back to her place, and I got really drunk and really high. And um, she was trying to fool around a little bit. But because she was high, in order to not freak out, she had to have Pawn Stars on. She just had to have the TV on. And it's like, this girl's trying to fool around with me, but, like, Pawn Stars is on. So my, like, you know, super stoned hypervision is focused on the screen. And it's just all I can see are, like, the old man's lips. Just, like, <laughs> all gooey and goopy. Just talking they're about... They're so moist. They're so moist. And it's like, this girl's trying to get something going. And I'm like, listen, could you please turn off the TV? <laughs> just if Chumley doesn't get you going, nothing will. <laughs> It's probably one of the most, like, awful moments of my whole life. But um, I, th I think maybe we're losing the script a little bit. <laughs> um, yep, don't care. Uh, don't care. Yeah, don't care. I, I went to, um, when I was in college, uh, me and my buddy, we met these two girls at this party, and we went back to their place, and uh, we decided to smoke some weed. And, and the, the recurring 
think theme of my life is that I, I really can't smoke weed. Like it, it just doesn't work. Um, mm. so I, I, I tried a bit of their weed and then got, um, sensory overload. Like I just, I couldn't handle all of the sights and sounds and everything. So I vomited on their coffee table and, uh, they kicked us out and my buddy, pun when, my buddy punched me in the face as soon as we get on, got on the street. Uh, <laughs> after you did that, you should have just went to the, <laughs> um, I have no idea what we're talking about anymore, man. I'm sorry. Did it? Uh, I mean, I was just talking about how I've gotten more action than Neil Jameson on my worst day. So <laughs> you burnt Neil. That's right. Uh, I so think for for metal and all this ruining whatever. At the end of the day, if you don't like something, just wait a bit. It'll go away. It'll move to the background. Something else will come along. Maybe you'll like it. Probably you won't. It doesn't matter. I mean, think of how many years uh, before Sunbather came out that Stick Stickly came out from Attack Attack. Ooh. Think how many, like, he makes no mention of that stuff. Can you guys honestly say that Dev Heaven as a band is, uh, I don't even want to say worse or, or even a little bit better. They're insanely better than some of the stuff that came out years and years before uh, they rose to the stardom that they did. Yeah, we um, we've gotten through uh, Hollywood Undead, Blood yeah. on the Dance Floor, Design the Stuck Skyline. Mojo. Yes, <laughs> Stuck Mojo. To be fair, we're still suffering under the dominion of Stuck Mojo. <laughs> we are still we are still stuck with their mojo. Um, yeah, and I mean, like before that, uh, hair metal. So it, it's always been a thing. Um, I guess. What I'm trying to say here is that uh, metal isn't going to die, but you will. I think that's fair. Good. If, we, if, if we have not put a serious feeling of existential dread in our listeners by the end of tonight, we're not doing our jobs. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's just the thing. Like People age out of shit. They lose interest. They get old. They, they, they quit being connected to the same group of people that they were connected before. Things feel weird, things feel alien, and then suddenly, like, there's all of these strange kids you never saw before enjoying something that you don't necessarily like. And it's not metal being ruined, it's just you fucking dying. My buddy just sent me the new album from Aether Realm, and this is related, I swear. Um, so he sent the album and he said, this is amazing, this is a really great album. And uh, to a point, I agree, but I was listening to it, and it's that same sort of um, folk, like epic, triumphant battle music where guys wear furs on stage, and there's lots of like chirpy, swirly riffs where they just, uh, you can tell they're just maxing out the gain on their amps, and they're just uh, noodling away. And it's just this kind of shit that I just ate up, especially back in the day when I wrote for that sound metal. Um, when I was huge into like Amon and Marth and all that Swedish shit, I just, I, I should have loved this album and I just didn't at all. I had no, uh, it didn't even give me any sort of nostalgia. I had completely grown past this stuff and we've been friends this whole time. And I mean, like this guy has just been in on this stuff and he loves it. Um, and it's the same thing when guys listen to like Metallica and they still love it. They'll still headbang the master of puppets, like that old man driving on some boulevard, uh, just banging it out to for whom the bell tolls, even though the bell definitely tolls for his wrinkled <laughs> ass. Uh, I believe the bell tolls for all of us. So, um, I don't know, man. Anything else you want to uh, to hit on here? Well, what does Jordan have to say? In general or about something specific? Just in general. The, the show could be real long. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, uh, what do you think about... Uh, the Paris Accord. No. Um, so what do you think about, uh, like, what's something that you used to just love and you loved all the time and you can listen to it all day and every day and it's just not the case anymore? Like, what's a band or an album or something that you're just so completely over? Oh, man. I'd have to think about that. Um, Lost Profits. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I I've always been a, a big fan of Kill Switch Engage, like, from the beginning, the very first time I've always loved them. And like, well, I like the, you know, the new stuff they put out. 
I don't find myself listening to it all that often, and I just end up going back to you know the first three albums. And even when you could put other bands that sound similar or you know played around with them at the same time, I'll listen to that and just be like, nah, no thanks. I'll just go back to Alive or Just Breathing. So uh, I, I'm in the same boat as probably a lot of other people that are listening right now. You know, it's funny. When I was in high school, um, I was like, super elitist like i thought because back when you're in high school and you're a fucking 15 year old kid that's when this shit is appropriate not when you're fucking brett stevens at the age of 49 <laughs> um but uh yeah i was a super huge elitist like denim jacket all the worst so i knew i wasn't supposed to like a certain kind of metal and kill switch engage with and as i lay dying those bands were definitely those bands back then um but I would honestly like put their music on blank CDs that I did not write anything on. And I would just fucking keep the volume down on the back of the bus and I would listen to that shit because I loved it. I actually liked it. And I couldn't be adult enough to just admit it and like what I like. Um, that, is, like, right that now, is incredible. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like right now, dude, I like Def Heaven. I like them just fine. They're a good band. They have great composition. They're awesome on stage. Um, they've really done something that – is unique it's their own sound we can say things like oh they ripped off all sets they weren't the first black gays band but if david hall makes any point that makes sense in this whole stupid article it's that deaf heaven really defined black gays as what it is and now deaf heaven are the guys that people are kind of knocking off to or not knocking off but getting inspired by to make their own music um and it's just for anybody to say like oh well this is commercialized this is black metal gone cheap this is how black metal ends it's just dumb as shit i if people just put this shit past themselves and relax they'd probably enjoy a lot more music that they're not allowing themselves to enjoy all right before we before we ended out what are you guys individually doing to ruin metal i'm writing for toilet of hell so god my damn it owned again <laughs> Hmm. Let's see. I got a job. No, that's pretty, pretty weak. Um, I uh, well, let's see. I, I, I guess. I, uh, I, I, I'm nice to my cat. I like to. Uh, I sometimes when my wife is watching TV, it's America's Next Top Model, and I'm just you know there for that, and that's okay with me. And um, you know sometimes like. Uh, I'll hold a door open for an old lady or something and she'll say thank you and I'll say you're welcome. Um, I cook too. It's pretty bad. Mm. I drink this, Dos Equis. This mm. sounds like you're plenty of fish profile actually. <laughs> That's right. It's still up. If you guys want to hit me up sometime, we can go grab some Dos Equis. Oh yeah. Um, I refuse to go see shows that start later than 11. <laughs> Because you're ruining metal. You're really doing it. Yeah. I, also, I don't support my scene. <laughs> Good. Let it die. Yeah. Fuck yeah. your scene. That's a, that's a conversation for another day, I think. No, it's not. Um, you know what? We should probably just stack this on the back half of the uh, Municipal Waste interview. <laughs> <laughs> just far end. Um, I don't know, man. I, I don't really have anything else. I could tell you some funny stories, but I got, I got nothing for today. You got nothing? Give me uh, I mean, I guess the coffee table incident is pretty funny. I mean, like, that's not the only time I've, I've puked on a woman's things because I was smoking weed. Dang. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have two other, two other times that actually happened. Um, <laughs> but, you know, we'll save them for another episode. <laughs> Leave the we'll people it... wanting more. <laughs> give, give the people what they want. Um, yeah, we'll call it a bonus episode, the Joe Thrash and Kill puke incidences. Yeah, I mean, that that could be a very long show indeed. But um, I think we should call it here for today. Uh, you guys, give me the last words. Those are them. <laughs> Jordan? You said it all. Absolute silence. Uh, be sure to like and rate and I don't know. I, actually, just listening to this show is enough. I'm sorry. I probably owe you all a dollar now. We'll see you next week.
You're listening to 66.6 FM. Radio TOVH. The Flush.